Hello ladies, gentlemen, and persons in between. My name is Tim Snowborn, and as the likely title of this video suggests, we are talking about 10 things that should be a thing on this episode of Not So Serious Issues. So, Game of Thrones is over, sadly. I thought of having myself cryogenically frozen until the next season comes up, but then who would feed my cats? So I'm forced to come up with other ideas for Not So Serious Issues episodes. Fortunately, I have a list that I've been working on. These are 10 ideas I've had uh, that I think need to happen. I am not, I don't know how to make any of my ideas a reality. You know, I'm sure we all have ideas and most of us have no idea how to make them come true. These are 10 of mine and I thought I would share them with you. Number one, a Shakespearean translation slash second language app. I've always wanted to learn how to talk the way people talk in Shakespeare's plays. Uh, I don't know, I want to say it's called Victorian English or just Shakespearean verse. I guess I can't go wrong with that label. Um, but, you know, I want to treat it as a second language. I want, to, I want an app or a website that does two things. Number one, it teaches you Shakespearean verse as if it were a second language. It like breaks down the sentence structure and shows you the pattern. Eventually you learn how to translate what you want to say into Shakespearean English. And that's the other function the app would have. It would actually translate the way Google translates between languages. You enter what you want to say and it spits out that sentence in Shakespearean verse. I think that's got to be a thing. I think we can do that. I mean, I know that I could read all of Shakespeare's plays and probably get a good idea how to talk like his characters from that, but that's not how you learn another language. You don't learn a second language just by reading things that are written in that language. You actually break it down and look at the sentence structure. And I know that Shakespearean verse is already English, but I still think if you want to learn how to speak like that, you have to break it down like it's a second language and teach it that way. By the way, if anyone knows this already exists, if there's a course or a website or a book or whatever that teaches you how to talk like that, please let me know in the comment section. I would love to find it. I've looked around, I didn't find anything, not really. Number two, and this may already be a thing, kind of. Um, I want to say DeviantArt is pretty close. I feel like there should be a website where people, like, I, there's people out there who are good writers, they have a good idea for a story, but they can't draw at all. And then there's people out there who can draw, but aren't good writers, they don't have good ideas for stories. And there's gotta be a way to bring these people together. There's gotta be a website where people with an idea for a story can, dig it, can get together with an illustrator and make like a graphic novel together. Again, you could maybe find someone like that on DeviantArt, or maybe there's another website. Again, if, the, if, this, if this already exists, please let me know. Um, just, I, I think there should be a website where like illustrators can post examples of their work to show their style, and wannabe story writers can post a synopsis of the story they want, and they can kind of get together. Hey, I like the, hey, I like this story, I'm gonna help you draw it or hey, I like your illustrations, you want to help me with this story idea that I've got? I think that that should happen. That should be a thing. Number three, in the spirit of drunk history, I think there should be another show called Stone Science. I want to see a show where a guy gets baked and tries to explain different scientific concepts. Probably stuff like quantum physics, since that seems to be the weirdest thing to try and explain. I just want to see some guy who's like, so, quantum entanglement um, means that I rub this particle and this particle over here feels it or moves or wiggles or something. And in the beginning of the universe, um, in the beginning of the universe, all of space, every atom that exists now was crammed into one infinitesimally small and infinitely dense particle which exploded so at one time 
everything was together already. So the universe, it's a, we're all one, man. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I can't really fake explain these things as well as an actual scientist would. But yeah, I think that one of these days when uh, marijuana gains wide acceptance in America, we need to follow up drunk history with a show like Stone Science. That's got to be a thing. Number four, the SNL of bands. Saturday Night Live, as I'm sure you know, is a show with an ever-changing cast. New people come in and old people leave the show. It's just constantly shifting. Why isn't there a band like that? It seems like I've heard this kind of thing is actually real in Japan. I want to say that there's a pop band that's been around for a while now and that they do exactly that. They bring in new people and uh, old people leave the band every once in a while. That's got to be a thing, I think. I think that would be interesting. I think it would be, a, it would be cool to see a band that's been around for decades not because they're just that good. I mean, yeah, well, obviously we, we want this super group to be good, but I want there to be a band that is around for a long, long time because they keep changing, you know, who's lead singer, who's a bass player, who's drummer. I don't know how many members this band would have, but I don't know if they have a con I don't know if they would have a consistent style. I suppose they wouldn't. After after a while you get new members in, the style would gradually change, and that would be one of the cool things about it. That needs to be a thing. Number six, and this is not a thing, it's just something I wish that they would do. I wish that airlines would seat passengers back to front. By that I mean, let the people who are in the tail of the plane get on first. If you go in reverse order like that, if you let the people in the back go in first and let the people in the front go in last, then everyone would get on the plane a lot faster. I mean, I know that the privilege of being in first class or whatever, you know, you, you pay for the privilege of getting on the plane before everybody else, fine. Let the first class people get on first. But after that, it should be back to front. That way, everybody gets on all at once, almost. You line up in reverse order, figure out where your seats are, everyone gets on, and it's it seems like it would be faster, would it not? That needs to be a thing. Number seven, a voice-activated lucid dreaming journal. I am really interested in lucid dreaming. I can't really do it. I know how you're supposed to keep a dream journal. That's one of the things they say. If you want to learn how to, if you want to learn lucid dreaming, you should keep a dream journal and try to find any patterns or triggers or whatever in your dreams, things that usually cue you in. I've had some lucid dreams, but it's very sporadic. I have no control over whether or not I have a lucid dream. It's just spontaneous. Um, but I think that in the near future, we will have an app. Again, I think it's apps. got to be apps because it's going to be on people's phone if you do everything with their phone. I think in the near future, we're going to have an app where you will record your dreams by speech to text. I think that that's better. Speech to text is better because, you know, when I wake up, I don't want to be dicking around on a keyboard, right? I just want to open my phone and verbally dictate what I remember of my dreams. That would be the best. And then another function of the app would be that it would find, it would give you like a word cloud. It would show you the words that most commonly come up in your dream descriptions. It would find those patterns for you. You know what I'm saying? I think that would go a long way toward people learning how to lucid dream. You just dictate your dreams verbally and then the app analyzes what you said and shows you the most commonly used words, the most common things that you find or see in your dreams and you learn to recognize them after a while. That's got to be a thing. Number eight, the slam dunk tank. You know how with a normal dunk tank, you got to throw a baseball at a target? I don't understand, like I've Googled this, I don't understand if, I, I, I can't believe, I can't believe no one has thought of this already. I've Googled it and tried to find this. Why don't we have dunk tanks that are operated by dunking a basketball through a hoop? 
I mean, it would be one of two ways. You would either do, you would either have to make a three-pointer, or you would have to dunk it. You would have to straight up dunk the ball. And then the little flipper or whatever would be just on the inside of the hoop. And as soon as the basketball hits the flipper, the person goes down in the water. No free throws, no layups, just three-pointer, or it's straight up dunk. Maybe with the hoop a little higher to give it a little more challenge. That's gotta be a thing. Number nine, a philosophical profile app. There's another app idea. You know, I'm interested in philosophy, obviously. There's gotta be an app or maybe a website that it's like a typical personality quiz, only at the end of it, it tells you whether you're an idealist or a realist, or you believe in this philosophy or that philosophy. And it would give you kind of a philosophical profile of what you believe. And then maybe also it would tell you which philosophers you are most similar to, and then maybe give recommendations for further reading. Okay, you should, you should check out, if you, if you believe in this, you should check out these books. You know what I'm saying? That should be a thing. Number 10, a website that shows you combinations of dogs. I have a slight preference for cats, I'm mostly a cat person, but every once in a while I like to think of a combination of dogs, two different dog breeds, and imagine what they would look like if they were bred together. And every time I think of a new combination, I just Google it because I guarantee you someone in the world has bred those two dogs together. For example, this is a Chihuahua Mastiff mix. That was the combination that got me into this little game in the first place. This is a Corgi Pug mix. This is a Boston Terrier combined with a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. There's got to be an app where like you push a button or you shake it and these wheels spin and lands on two different do dog breeds and then it spits out a picture of that combination. Like you spin the wheels and you get Corgi Yorkshire Terrier and it shows you a picture of that. I would like to see that. As a person who likes to come up with combinations of dogs, I think that should be a thing. So let me know what you think, guys. Are any of these good ideas? Do any of these ideas already exist? Do any of you have any ideas of your own you think should be a thing? Anything you think the world needs? Tell me all about it in the comments below. Until next time, thank you for joining me for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did like it, thank you in advance for uh, subscribing, sharing, liking, and commenting. Thanks again, everyone. Catch you later.